Praise the Lord. Church, if you are happy to be here, I said, Praise the Lord. What is the Lamb? I will praise the Lord because He has counted us worthy to mention His name, to believe His name, and to have part in what He did on the cross of Calvary. And I pray you will find us worthy to enter into the kingdom of God at last in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you because it's the day of the Lord, a day of joy, a day of sunshine, a day of excitement, a day of worshiping you in spirit and truth. We're asking, Lord, that today you open the pages of the scriptures to every one of us in Jesus' name. Help us once again to appreciate the worthiness of the Lamb, the acceptance of the Lamb, the exaltation of the Lamb, and the glory that shall come through all that he has done for us, for everyone, on the cross of Calvary in Jesus' name. Keep us awake. Help us, Lord, to respect and honor the house of the Lord and the goodness of God and to exalt the name of the Lord in everything we do at the service today in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Today we're coming to Revelation chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 1, we're going to verse 14, I read the first and the last verses. Revelation chapter 5, verse 1, And I saw in the hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed for seven seals. Verse 14, and the four beasts, the living creatures, said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders, representing the whole church, fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. In between those two verses, we find a search in heaven, God sits on the throne, and John, as he beheld him on the throne, saw something, a book in the hand of the Almighty God. And then there was a search, a cry in heaven, who is worthy to open the book and to break the seals. And then the record tells us, all through in heaven and on earth and under the earth, nobody was found to open the book. And John, the beloved, knew the importance of that book, the indispensability of that book, and the necessity of opening that book so that the world, the earth, can have the demonstration of what is recorded in that book. And because there was no one to open the book, it went. And then, all of a sudden, a strong angel, one of the elders said, don't we? The search is concluded. Somebody is worthy. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, he has prevailed to open the book. And then John looked up after he stopped weeping. He was looking for a lion. And then a lamb appeared, having seven horns and seven eyes. And it appeared as if it had just been slain. And then when he came to the ancient of days, he came to the king of kings. He came to the God of glory. He took that book. And when he took that book, 
even before breaking the seals, even before opening the book, all of heaven was full of excitement and worship. And the seven and the 24 elders representing the church, they cried unto the Lord and they sang unto the Lord, Worthy is the Lamb to take the book, to break the seals, and to open the book and read, and then effect all that was written in the book. And then all of heaven, all of earth, everyone opened their mouth to praise the Lord and to glorify him, to glorify the one that sat on the throne and to glorify our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who had prevailed to open the book. That's what we're looking at today. But there are a lot of questions. What kind of book is that? And what's contained in that book? When the seals are opened, what will happen? And when the contents of the book, when they are read, what will happen? What's the evidence of what is the effect of opening that book for you as an individual, for John who stopped weeping, and for the whole church, and for the earth? For the world in which we live. The book actually contains everything that God has in plan to redeem the world. How do we know that? Because after the Lamb took the book, after he opened the seals, and the seals were opened one after the other, when the last seal was opened, and everything was concluded. The Bible says all the kingdoms of the world became the kingdom of God and of his Lord of Christ. Look at Revelation chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 15. Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded... And there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Christ was to reign over the whole earth, over the whole universe, but before he could reign, and before the earth and all the kingdoms of the world will belong to God and to Christ the Lamb of God. All those seals will be opened and everything will be dramatized and it is at the final time of opening the seventh one. And the seventh angel sounded that all the kingdoms will become the kingdom of our God. That's why we know that the content of that book is the content, the plan of God to reclaim, to redeem, and to restore the whole earth. As we look intimately at chapter 5, the message today is the indispensable lamb and the inestimable book. The lamb, the book. The lamb, indispensable the book inestimable we're dividing the message to three parts number one the woefulness woe woeful woefulness the woefulness without loosening or opening the book the war that comes the damnation that comes the eternal damnation and regret that comes, the woefulness without loosening or opening the book. Number two, the worthiness of the Lamb to open the book. The worthiness of the Lamb, the only one worthy in heaven, on earth, in the whole universe, in any generation, in every generation, the only one that is worthy 
to open the book. The worthiness of the Lamb to open the book. Number three, the worship of the Lord after obtaining the book. The worship of the Lord after obtaining the book. Let's come to point number one. The woefulness without loosening or opening the book. I'm reading from Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. The book sealed perfectly that no intruder could counterfeit, no intruder could spoil, no intruder can defile, can deface the seals or destroy the seals or destroy the book or even open the book. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book or to lose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven or nor on in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much. That's John. John said, the apostle said, the beloved said, I wept much because no man was found worthy to open or to read the book, neither to look thereon. As we look at those verses of scripture, there are three things you want to notice there. Number one, the notable wonder in heaven, looking for someone to open the book. A notable wonder, a great mandate, watchfulness, asking and searching somebody to open the book, somebody to take the book from the hand of the ancient of days, from the hand of the almighty God, and to break the seals and to open the book and to read the book. No table wonder in heaven as we search to open the book. Number two, there will be none worthy in heaven who could open the book. None worthy in heaven to open the book. Number three, noticeable weeping until the opening of the book. And I saw, verse one, in the hand of him that sat on the throne, a book reaching within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals, a unique book, no other book like that book that only God knows the content, no other book like that book that no angel strong or mighty could take that book and open the seals that not anyone on earth, not anyone in heaven, not anyone under the earth, no demon and no angel, no man wise or foolish, no man first century and the final century, anywhere, no one in the church and no one in the world would even take the book and could open the book. And that book, as I've told you and read in the scripture, is contained the plan of God, the program of God, the title deeds of the earth, and everything God will have to do to reclaim the whole earth and to redeem the whole earth, to restore the whole earth to its original glory original beauty and original creation and then to hand it over to the king of kings and the lord of lords to the lord jesus christ and why is it no one in heaven no one on earth could open that book because it was sealed daniel 
chapter 12 tells us, reading from verse 4, in Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the, the words and seal the book, even to the end, to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Daniel had seen what will happen at the end of the age. Daniel had seen what, at, what will happen when there will be a stone from the mountain without hand thrown at all the kingdoms of the world. All of them will be smashed and shattered. And then that stone will become a mountain and occupy the whole earth. And the interpretation is that his dominion, the dominion of Christ, will be forever and ever. It will not come to an end. And he had written all the details as to who will come, how the prince will come, and the prince will fight for the saints. And eventually, the sword from the mouth of the prince of priests, of the prince of princes, it will destroy all those armies of the Antichrist. And now, after the old scene in the last chapter, Daniel was told, seal the book because there'll be no understanding of that book until the appointed time. Look at verse 9, and he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. The words of the book are closed and sealed until the time of the end of the age and so because that book was sealed and because the words were closed nobody could understand until now the rapture of the church had taken place at the end of revelation chapter 3 and at the beginning of revelation chapter 4 the church is now by the throne around the throne before the throne of god and now while god was still on the throne a cry came out a message came out a mandate came out we're watching we're looking for we're wanting somebody to open the book and to lose the seals thereon and isaiah tells us in isaiah chapter 29 Isaiah chapter 29, we're looking at verse 11. Isaiah 29 verse 11, And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee, and he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. I cannot, for it is sealed. An important book, an inestimable book, a universally acclaimed book, and yet nobody could read because it was sealed. Verse 12, and the book is delivered to him that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he says, I am not learned. The wonder of the book that could not be opened, that could not be read. Look at Revelation chapter 5, looking at verse 3. Revelation chapter 5, verse 3. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book neither to look thereon, none worthy in heaven to open the book, because it was sealed. Only Jesus Christ could do it. Only Christ could come in his power and in his glory, and he could open the book. A wonder in heaven that none was worthy to open the book and now there's noticeable weeping until the opening of the book look at verse 4 and i wept much john was saved 
and I wept much. John was sanctified, and I wept much. John was filled and baptized in the Holy Ghost, and I wept much. John had seen the glorified Christ in chapter 1, and I wept much. John had received the revelation concerning the church, the church of that age, and the church till the end of the rapture. With all that revelation, and I wept much. And John as had said, I was in the spirit. And when he was in the spirit, he was caught up to heaven, come up hither. And I wept much. What did I tell you that? With all the privileges John had had, and with all the insight John had had, and with all the experiences John had had, and with all the glory that was on John, when he saw that there was nobody to open this book, he wept much. And there are people that do not know, they don't, they don't even know such a book exists. But you understand, as you come to this world, we're talking about this book, and you have to live, you have to understand the book. But because this particular book, inestimable book, nobody to open, nobody to break the seals, and nobody to read, he wept much. Can I take you back a little? When Joshua came to the, to the edge of the land of Canaan, the promised land, there was a book for him and for him to occupy, and for him to conquer, and for him to possess all that land of promise, that book must be followed. And we're told this book of the law, which you need so you can conquer, and so you can have all the land that I've given to the children of Israel, this book must not depart out of your mouth. You will open, you will read, you will observe, you will obey, you will do everything that is reaching therein. Can I bring you back again to the time of the Lord Jesus Christ? When Jesus came to this world, he knew in the volume of the book it is written of me. And all that he had to do to give us redemption was in that book. All that he had to do to give us a restoration and to restore every human being and to bring us to salvation, everything was in that book. And he said, everything that is reaching concerning me must be fulfilled in that book. Joshua, there's a book. The Lord Jesus, there was a book. The apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. They came and they were to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. They were to bring redemption. They were to bring restoration. They were to bring regeneration. They were to bring the life of Christ, the life of God in the heart of a man. And then there was a book also that they are to read. That's the Bible and is given unto us. The unsearchable riches of Christ recorded in the book and they wait by the book and Paul wait by the book because they could read and then salvation has now come unto us I spoken about Joshua I spoken about Jesus I spoken about Paul and about the apostles they wait by the book in your own personal life God has a book God has a plan reaching his book a purpose reaching in his book, a program reaching in his book for every individual, for you in particular. Look at Psalm 139, I'm reading from verse 16. Psalm 139, and we're reading from verse 16. It tells us in Psalm 139, verse 16, tells us here very clearly it says thine eyes did see my substance this David one person one believer my substance be yet of unperfect and in thy book all my members were reaching in my book in thy book all my members were reaching which in continuous were fashioned when as yet there was none of them 
how precious also I thy thoughts unto me. What's reaching concerning me? How precious are thy thoughts unto me? O oh God, how great is the sum of them, the totality of them. If I shall count them, they are more in number than, than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Now, there are people that live all through their lives and what God has written concerning them, nobody has opened the book, nobody has told them they are to achieve anything, they are to accomplish anything, that they came to this world for a purpose. And that purpose is in the hand of God. And while that man is a sinner in darkness, he cannot tell what has been written concerning him until you are saved, until you are born again and you come directly unto the Lord and then he begins to direct you and the Spirit of God begins to guide you as to this he knows the mind of God he knows the deep things that were reaching concerning everyone that's why you should be saved but even after being saved if you cannot reach into that book like John wept, you should be weeping even if you are sanctified, but you don't know why am I here, what am I to do, what am I to accomplish, like John Webb, you should be weeping. Even if you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, but even though you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, if anybody asks you, do you know for certainty that what you are doing is reaching concerning you in the book of God, you might say, how can I be sure you should be weeping even though you say I'm going to the kingdom of God and when the rapture takes place, I will go look at John. He was called up, come up hither. But when nobody could read that book, he went, he cried before the Lord until one of the angels and one of the elders said, weep not because now somebody has been found. Before we go to the next point, I want to ask you about that book, the inestimable book, about that book to reclaim the earth, to reclaim and to restore the earth, Christ will take the book. That's in the program of God. But now, about the book of your life, what you are to accomplish, how you are to live, what you are to do, do you remember Paul saying, I have finished? Do you remember Christ saying, I have finished? And both of them saying, there's nothing else to be done. The Spirit of God makes it very clear. I have finished concerning you, concerning your life, concerning the plan of God, concerning the program of God, concerning the reason why he brought you into this world and he brought you to the kingdom at such a time like this. Have you started? Are you doing it? Or are you roaming about? Are you wasting your life? And do you, are you so blind that you do not know you are here for a purpose? And then when the time comes that you will leave, will you be able to say, I have finished those people knew what was written concerning them they knew what they were to accomplish that's why they could say i have finished i pray you'll be able to discover everything the lord wants you to be wants you to do you will not be in ignorance you will finish in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verse 27. Acts, chapter 13, verse 27. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, they that dwell at Jerusalem and the rulers of the people at Jerusalem, because they knew him not, 
nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day. They read in the book of God every Sabbath day. They have fulfilled them in condemning him. They didn't even know that salvation was available. They read and read every Sabbath day. They didn't know that the door of the kingdom was open to whosoever will come. They read and read every Sabbath day. They didn't know that eternal life was even available for them. And yet it was in the book they were reading. They couldn't understand because they didn't yield to the Spirit of God. Are you one of those people? Like those in Jerusalem coming to church every Lord's Day, every Sunday, and then you've heard about salvation, you've heard about sanctification, you've heard about Christian experiences, everything you have read, everything you have heard, you do not understand any judge, and you keep coming. And yet, you cannot tell that this is written concerning you. You ought to be saved. Look at verse 46 of that Acts chapter 13. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Salvation was for them. They didn't know. Eternal life was for them. They didn't know. It was written in the book of God that they should be saved. And the Lord sent the Spirit of God, sent Paul and Barnabas to them and read to them what is written in the book concerning them, that Christ has provided salvation for them. The book was open. Somebody interpreted to them. They didn't understand. They were not saved. And Paul the apostle said, see, you put eternal life away from yourself and you judge yourself unworthy of eternal life. We're not going to waste our lives with you. We have other things to do. There are other books. There are other people. We need to read to them what is written in the book concerning them. We turn to the Gentiles. I pray the Lord will not turn from you. If you are coming to the church and then you are reading the word of God, and yet salvation is not clear to you, you ought to weep like John wept. If you are coming to the church and you proclaim, you profess to be saved, and you hear about holiness, but it's all dim and it's all darkness to you, and you cannot understand, without holiness no man shall say the Lord, like John wept, you ought to weep. If you are coming to the church and you are coming week after week, Bible study after Bible study, and you appear to understand in your mind, in your brain, but your heart cannot get, your heart cannot catch the word that is made for you. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me both in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria to the uttermost part of the earth, and it never dawns on you to get on your knees and get on your face and seek the power of God. You ought to weep like Jesus. John Webb, if you're coming to the church and you say, I'm a child of God, all you can do is to amass the things of the world and you're running after this and that and you cannot stop and wait and ask yourself, what is written concerning me? Why am I in this world? 
what is in the book about me that I need to understand. And you don't understand, you need to stop like John the Beloved and weep until the personality will come, until Christ will come and take that book and open to you and tell you this is why you are here and this is what you ought to do and this is what you ought to accomplish if you are coming to the church and the way you live this year is the way you lived last year is the way you lived 10 years ago and the way you lived 20 years ago today is like yesterday and yesterday was like the other day and there is no difference and you are doing merry go round and you are not accomplishing anything and you cannot say I know this is what is written in the book of God concerning me and life is going and you are getting to the end and you might not even have started the reason why you came to this world you ought to stop and you ought to weep before the Lord and say Lord I need to know what is in the book concerning me and then uh, when the book is open that this is what god means this is why you are here and this is what to accomplish then the spirit of god will give you grace and give you strength and give you power and then you will walk in the way of the lord and your life will not be in vain in jesus name my life will not be in vain my life will not be lived in darkness. What is written concerning me from all eternity, from the foundation of the world, the Lord will reveal to you, will reveal to me, will reveal to us, and then the grace and the strength and the power of the Spirit to live as He wants us to live, so that at the end of your time on earth, you'll be able to say like Jesus, you'll be able to say like Paul the Apostle, I have finished. I have run the race. I have kept the faith. And now a crown of righteousness is kept for me. Not for me only, but for those that love is appearing. But if you have not even started the first sentence in the book of what is written concerning you, and you are getting older, and you are getting near the grave and the time of the rapture is coming and you have not even finished the first paragraph of the first page of what is written concerning you how will it be in eternity what will you tell god in eternity and when you get over there and he opens the book see what you could have done see where you could have been see what you could have accomplished and then you go through that year, this is what you should have done. That time, this is what you should have done. That period, that's what you should have done. But you just live your life and you wasted a whole lifetime. I pray God will deliver us from such wanton wastage in Jesus' name. Amen. Let somebody there say, Amen. Amen. Number two now is the worthiness of the Lamb to open the book. The worthiness of the Lamb to open the book. Before I read verse 5, this book of books, this greatest book of the universe, this book that no other person could open, only the Lamb was worthy to open that book. And look at this. The Bible, the Word of God, this book of life eternal, this book that shows us the grace of God, this book that shows us how we can have experience with the Lord, this book that can transport us from earth to heaven. Only the Lamb of God is worthy to open this book, you know, those two people on the way to Emmaus, they were going and they were talking and Jesus came to them and Jesus said, what are you talking about? That your faces look sad and he said, are you a stranger in Jerusalem? Don't you know what has happened? And he said, about what? And then they said about Jesus, he said about this great prophet 
and we thought that he was the one that would bring the kingdom back to Israel. And then eventually they got to the house and he entered with them. And the Bible says he opened their eyes and they beheld and they knew. All they had heard, all they had known, all their aspirations, all their expectations, all their prayers, their eyes were not opened. All their discussion, their eyes were not opened. But Jesus opened their eyes. And the disciples too, they were inside. They were locked inside. And Jesus came to them and he said, O oh, fools, that you could not understand what had been reaching concerning me. And then the Bible says, he opened their eyes and then they understood everything that was reaching. Saul of Tarsus, going through life, Go there, persecute there, go there, catch that one until the Lord met him on the way to Damascus. Then he became blind. Actually, he had been blind spiritually. And as a demonstration of the blindness he had had, so he now became blind physically. He was praying for three days and then eventually Ananas came, laid hands on him and his eyes were opened and now the book was open to him and everywhere he went he could take that book and tell them about jesus opening the scriptures unto them you know he took christ took the greatest of all books it was the only one worthy to open the book and the book you have in your hand the bible is the only one that is worthy to open this and the book of your life is the only one that is able to open that book of your life and we need to pray and we need to wait upon the lord oh lord i don't want to live all my days in darkness open my eyes that i may see point number two the worthiness of the lamb to open the book. I'm looking at Revelation chapter 5, verse 5, and one of the elders, one of the representatives of the church says unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts of the living creatures and the midst of the elders representing the church stood a lamb as it, as it had been slain, having seven horns, perfect power, complete power, total power, majestic power, irresistible power, seven horns and seven eyes, perfect knowledge, perfect insight, and perfect intelligence, seven eyes, and that penetrated everywhere, which are the seven spirits, and the Holy Spirit, perfect spirit, and the fullness of the Spirit of God sent forth into all the earth. And then it says in verse 7, and he came up, and he took the book, out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne, the worthiness of the Lamb to open the book. Number one, the wonder of the lion in his reign. The wonder of the lion in his reign. Number two, the worthiness of the Lamb for redemption. The worthiness of the Lamb for redemption number three a wakefulness waking up a wakefulness to life the life of rejoicing we're told in verse five that one of the elders came and told john don't weep anymore because the lion the king the highest the mightiest the most powerful he has prevailed to open the book. Jesus Christ is the king of the whole universe. And because he's the king, that's why it's depicted 
and that is why he's revealed as the lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He tells us in Revelation, Revelation chapter 19, verse 16, and he has on his vesture and on his tie a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's Christ, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, is King. He says, All power in heaven and on earth is given unto me. And as a king, he prevails like a lion will prevail over any other animal. Now you will see that in the, um, in the book of Revelation, the Antichrist is shown as a beast. The, the Satan is shown as a dragon. And the false prophet is shown as the second beast. And Jesus is shown as the lion. And as the lion can crush and destroy and defeat every beast in the forest, so Jesus Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah, will defeat the Antichrist, will defeat the false prophet, and will defeat all the deceivers of this world. He will do that in Jesus' name. He has prevailed. What a great lesson for you and for me. Anything against your life coming from the Antichrist, coming from Satan, coming from Lucifer, coming from any power, power under the earth, power on earth, or power in the skies, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the king of kings and the lord of lords will crush every enemy out of your life in Jesus' name. As you stand and then you see the lions, those who come like running lions and they want to crush you, then you look at Jesus on your side and then you say, Lord Jesus, the one like a running lion is coming. Christ will go between you and that running lion. And then he will take that running lion, he will take that devil, tear him to pieces on your behalf in Jesus' name. And then we're told, number two now, is the worthiness of the Lamb for redemption. It says in verse 6, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as if it had been slain. It had been slain. It's not that he was going to die at that time. He had died already. He had been slain. The lamb had given himself in the past. And that, think about that. He died, was buried, he rose from the dead, he appeared to his disciples, he went to heaven, Many years have passed, many decades have passed, and now John was before the throne of God in heaven and the sacrifice of Calvary. Many years before that time that had been, that had been done was still as fresh as ever. The blood of Jesus as fresh as ever. The death of Jesus as fresh as ever. The slain of the Lamb as fresh as ever. Do you know that today the blood of Jesus is still as fresh? The death of Jesus is still as fresh as when he shed that blood on the cross of Calvary? And as it was efficacious for that thief on the cross who said, Remember me when you come into your kingdom, that same blood that saves today, that cleanses today, is still as fresh. And when you call upon him today, as he forgave that man instantaneously, he will forgive you instantaneously. 
as he wiped away all his sin and all his crime instantaneously because the lamb as if it had just been slain is still in the, in the midst of the throne of God as you call upon him for salvation your salvation will be immediate in Jesus name you call on him that the blood of the lamb that was shed for you will cleanse you will purge you will purify you will sanctify you that blood instantaneously today will sanctify you in Jesus name the lamb is still as gentle, as loving, as meritorious, as gracious as he was at that time. And the sin, the sins you have committed, laid upon him. Believe today, and your salvation is sure in Jesus' name. What would you do after that? When we have experienced the power of the lion, and the efficacious cleansing of the Lamb. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, that is Revelation chapter 5, verse 8. And when they are taking the book, the four bees and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, before the Lamb, having every one of them halves and golden vials full of odors which are the prayers of the saints and they sang a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou was slain was slain was past and slain and has redeemed us past tense and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests you've done that already and we shall in the future and we shall in the millennial reign and we shall reign on the earth I pray you'll be there. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands and thousands plural times thousands, plural, millions and billions and trillions of people saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive, number one, power, and to receive, number two, riches, and to receive, number three, wisdom, and to receive, number four, strength, and to receive number five honor and to receive number six glory and to receive number seven blessing the fullness of praise the fullness of worship the perfection of praise the perfection of worship of the whole universe of all the people that have been saved of all the people that have been ransomed and purchased and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, from the first person to get saved in the past, past generation, until the last person that will get saved in the coming generation, every one of them, with you and I being included there, they gave worship unto the Lord and praise unto the Lord. They glorified the Lord. And I pray you'll be among the number when the time comes in Jesus' name. A wakefulness to the life of rejoicing. If He has saved you, there's something to rejoice about. If He has sanctified you, 
There's something to rejoice about if the book of your life has been opened and you are not walking in darkness and you are not walking with deepness of sight and now you can see in that book of God what is written concerning you and the grace of God and the strength of God and the power of God is moving you on and leading you on and you can see every day I live by the grace that comes from the slain lamb and I, come, and I live by the power that comes from the lion of the tribe of Judah, then you can sing praise unto the Lord as all those people, myriads of them, trillions of them, were singing praises unto the Lord. We ought to rejoice as Jesus told us in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. I'm reading here to you from verse 20. In Luke chapter 10, the reason for our joy and the receive for our happiness. It says in Luke chapter 10, verse 22, notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven. In this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, Lord, Lord, have we not cast out devils in your name? And in your name have we done many wonderful works and we've wrought miracles. In that rejoice not, because there are people that will do that. And on the last day, it will say unto them, I never knew you. They didn't have salvation. Depart from me, ye that walk in equity. And then he says in this, rejoice not that sicknesses have been healed because you prayed. Well, there are many people that can do that. And if you have all the power and the faith to move every mountain and you do not have the love of God inside you, in that rejoice not. In this rejoice not that even the sun or the moon is standing in at your command. You remember Joshua, he said, sun stand there and moon stand there. If you have all that power that those miracles could be done and you could arrest even the sun, uh, if you do not have the sanctification experience in this, rejoice not. If you have all power so that you could do almost anything you wish and all the stars and all the subjects are submissive unto you. I command that, I control that, I compel that, and the all obey me in that rejoice not. There's only one thing that will cause our joy, only one thing that will maintain our joy in eternity, that you have your name written in the book of life. What's your name? What's your title? What's your position? What's your power? What's your privilege? What are the things you're doing? What are you bragging about? What power do you have? What possession do you have? What authority do you have? How many people do you control? What part of the church do you control? In that, rejoice not. The only thing that will cause our joy, that the lamb who was slain, he was slain because of me. And then I have the grace and I have the salvation. I have the witness of the Spirit of God that he is my Savior. He is my Lord. In all the other things, rejoice not. But rejoice because the worthy one is so worthy. He has taken your sins away. He is so worthy. He has taken your deep, the degradation away. He is so worthy. He has taken the depravity away. He is so worthy. He has saved you. He has sanctified you. He has turned your life around. And then the Spirit of God is bearing witness with your heart. I am a child of God. I am saved. 
I am transformed. I am a new creature. And the Spirit of God is bearing witness in your heart. You have that holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Then you can wake up and begin to rejoice and say, Praise the Lord. His work at Calvary has been efficacious in my life. Otherwise, don't rejoice. Otherwise, you're going to miss the joy that is going to be given to the Lamb forever and ever. Wake up and examine the experiences you have. Am I saved? Am I sanctified? Am I filled with the Holy Ghost? Has Calvary meant anything for me? And is the Spirit of God bearing witness in my heart? A Calvary paid the whole price of my redemption and I've tasted of the goodness of God. I pray that joy will be yours until the final day in Jesus' name. In Revelation chapter 19, I'm reading here from verse 7. Here is the reason for our joy. Here is the reason for our rejoicing. Here is the reason that I wake up and I say I may not have the sand and the cement of this world. I may not have the grace and the fruit of labor in this world. I may not be able to say I have that paper, I have that certificate, I have that profession. But if I have salvation in my heart, if I have salvation in my soul, if I have salvation in my whole being, if Christ lives on the inside of me, if I'm part of the bride of the Lamb, if I'm sanctified, if I know beyond any shadow of doubt that if the trumpet shall sound now and the dead in Christ shall rise and then those who are alive will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. If I know beyond any shadow of doubt that I'm part of the bride of Christ, then I can rejoice with all the people of God that rejoice. It says in Revelation chapter 19 verse 7, let us be glad and rejoice. Let us be glad and rejoice, us who are saved, us who are sanctified, us who are ready for the rapture. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready and to her was granted that she should be arranged in fine linen, clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. That's the only reason for joy here now. That's the only reason for joy at the final day. And I pray that that joy will be yours in Jesus' name. Point number three is the worship of the Lord after obtaining the book. The worship of the Lord after obtaining the book. Look at verse 11. Revelation chapter 5, verse 11. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, those are the living creatures, and the elders, representatives of the church, and the number of them was 10,000, times 10,000 and thousands of thousands seen with a loud voice worthy is a lamb worthy is the redeemer worthy is the savior worthy is the lamb that took the seas of the world away worthy is the one that shed his blood that you and I might be redeemed worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. And every creature that is in heaven, the saved saints, the saints who have been raptured, and on the earth, those who are still living on earth, and those under the earth, those who are buried, and their bodies were still in the grave. 
and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, all those who are drowned and their bodies were not discovered, and they still remained in the sea, I had I seen blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, that's the almighty God, the ancient of days, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the whole church said, Amen. And those who are waiting for the rapture said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. He worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Look up here. All beings on earth are divided into three. Number one, the animals, they have a beginning and they have an end. Every animal, every creature in the forest has a beginning, has an end. They're not going to worship them. The second group, human beings, they have, everyone has a beginning but has no end. Has a beginning when he was born has no end those who go to heaven they have no end and those who go uh, to hell they have no end whether in heaven or in hell they will live forever and ever but they have a beginning the ones that have a beginning the ones that have an ending animals you don't worship them the ones that have a beginning and they have no end because they have a beginning you don't worship them the third category they don't, don't have any beginning from all eternity they don't have any ending until eternity from eternity to eternity god is god from eternity to eternity the son of god is the son of god from eternity to eternity the holy ghost is forever present from eternity to eternity the holy trinity god the father god the son and god the holy ghost and that is the god we worship the ones that have a beginning and have an ending you don't worship you see the religions of the world, if you go to some countries, you will see how the big ugly idol is there. If you go to some of the shops, they even put their ugly big idol there and it's like a beast. Those beasts, you don't worship them, whether the reality or in their image because they are not from eternity to eternity. Other people, they worship human beings, and some people, they are going to worship the Antichrist when the Antichrist comes eventually, and he will set himself in the temple of God. He has a beginning, and then he will not have an end. He'll be in hell forever and ever. You don't worship the Antichrist, and you don't worship any man, but God, God Almighty, from eternity to eternity, ever the same, and his years they fail not. That is the one that these elders, that the whole church, and that all the angels of God in heaven worship. And the Lord is telling you, that is the one to worship. John, the beloved, made a great mistake when he comes to the end of the revelation in chapter 19. He was so surprised, he was so excited because of the revelation that was given to him. And then he fell down before the angel that showed him the revelation to worship that angel and the angel said get up see that you do not do that i am one of the servants sent to reveal this thing to you 
that angel had a beginning. He was created, although he will not have an end, because we we'll live in heaven forever and ever. Anyone that has a beginning, even if will not have an end, you will not worship. But here we are told that all those elders and all those myriads and thousands times ten thousand and ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands, they fell down and they worship the almighty God. God is the only one that will worship. In this place, number one, we see the angelic worship. Angelic worship of the glorious Lord. The angelic worship of the glorious Lord in verse 11. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands seen with a loud voice worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and they worshiped him number two the ascending worship of the gracious lamb increasing ascending worship they started the four, the four beasts, and then the 24 elders, and then the angels, and all the redeemed increasing. They are sending worship of the gracious Lord in verse 13, and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them had I seen blessing, and honor, and glory, and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders fell and the twenty and four and the beast said, Amen, everybody, Amen. And the four and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Number one, the angelic worship of the of the glorious Lord. Number two, the ascending worship of the gracious Lamb. Number three, the acceptable worship from godly lives. The acceptable worship from godly lives. As you come and you have looked at Revelation chapter 5 and then you are asking where do you stand? There are people draw a circle and in that circle you have those who are bought by the blood of the Lamb. There are some people they are outside that circle and they are far away from that circle. Although they might know about church, they know about Bible, although they might read the Bible, they don't understand, they don't have the Lamb of God cleansing them, washing them, they don't have the Lamb of God preparing them for life eternal, they are outside the circle, they are outside the real church of the living God, they are watching from afar, their mouths are closed, their eyes are blinded, their minds are blinded, they are outside, they are not even making any attempt to come in, they cannot offer acceptable worship on the, to the Lord, other people People have come nearer and they are outside but they are at the edge of the circle they're looking inside they know some of us our lives are so happy and every day every time we're offering praises unto God and we're worshiping the Lord anything that happens we praise God in everything and we say God is on the throne we see the Lord on the throne we sense the Lord on the throne he is our savior he is our sanctifier he is our healer he is our deliverer he is our king he is our Lord 
and he will reign forever and ever and we're saying oh lord when will you come and they can see us there at the edge of the circle they cannot worship god their their heart is still in the world their feet in the world their mind in the world and they cannot worship until uh, somebody tells them why don't you go in why don't you go in and praise the lord he then takes the step of repentance and faith in the lord jesus christ and he gets in and all of his sudden the spirit of worship will come upon him because now his sins are forgiven his life is turned around his soul is poured his spirit is sanctified and he says oh lord i worship you for my salvation i worship you for my sanctification i worship you because i know you have prepared me and you are qualifying me for heaven and then eventually when the door will close and the lord will say it is time all those in that circle wherever they are any part of the world the lord will gather them from the west and from the east from the north and the south and from foreign countries and everywhere and the spirit of god will catch them up and what we do there when we have the crown and when we wear the robe the white robe the only thing we'll do over all our lives is that we'll be worshiping the lord i will be there we'll be worshiping the lord i said i will be there a new song the lord will put in your mouth all sorrows gone all tears gone all persecutions gone all afflict affliction gone and all the disturbances of the world everything gone all the darkness gone it will be light forever and ever and then you bend before the lord you look up again and you look at the eyes and the face of your savior and then you say lord i thank you for all eternity you'll be praising god and praising god God and praising God but if you don't praise God now if you cannot worship God now praise will be a strange thing to you all through eternity if you are outside the circle now when we're all gone and the rapture has taken place you'll be outside the circle you will see us afar off as that rich man in hell was being tormented when Lazarus was being comforted and Abraham said you can see us but you cannot cross over we can see you but we cannot cross over I will be inside the circle I will be inside the circle saved I'll be inside the circle sanctified i'll be inside the circle victorious i'll be inside the circle and when christ shall come i'll be one of the people of god i will see him on that day how about you i will see him on that day i said how about you i will see him on that day and the praises of god will be in your mouth forever and ever in jesus name are you there Will you be there? I say, will you be there? Or will you remain outside the circle? Why don't you rise up and tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I am in. Oh Lord, I am in. And nothing will drive me out. Oh Lord, I am in. And nothing will drive me out. I am in among the people that know God as Savior. I'm in among the people that are redeemed. I'm in among the people that are washed in the blood of the Lamb. I am in. The Spirit of God is bearing witness in my heart. I'm a child of God. I am in. I'm part of the bride of Christ. I am in and I'm going to endure to the end and nothing will drive me out, will drive me away from the kingdom of God. I'm one of the people that will be praising God praising God praising God forever and ever open your mouth and tell the Lord and be a part of the worshiping people of God here now that you may be there also in eternity in Jesus name